Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch The Big Bang Theory Season 2, Episode 12. This is like the, the Battle Bots episode where Howard and Kripke like just go at it with the robots. We're going to see how scientifically accurate this episode is, and at the end of it I'll show you guys a clip of an actual Battle Bots competition. Featuring one articulated razor sharp killing saw, one polycarbonate grinding and flipping wheel, steel armor plate, exoskeleton top and bottom, and enough horsepower to drive 110 pounds of mechanized death from zero to holy crap in 4.8 seconds. <laughs> Is it wrong? It's amazing to me to like to see how many different things these guys build in their living room. You know, like there's like well why why not build this robot? in an area where, like in a lab, right, where they all work and they have resources abundant. Killer robots, if used responsibly, can be really, really fun. There are competitions where you build your own robot and all you do with it is try to destroy another person's. And these things are actually pretty sizable. Like, if you look them up on YouTube, like, they all have a crazy amount of views and the whole stadium is awesome and, like, the, the people involved build some really creative, like, monster robots and like this is, I mean, th this is the real deal. Like a lot of people have a lot of fun with this. Monty looks like one of the robots that could enter a competition as well. Like it looks a little bit bigger than one, but it's not too much so. And um, I like how it's like the whole thing is encased. So there's no like loose wires anywhere or like there's no obvious weak spots, right? And it has a saw, which is like usually the weapon of choice. As cool as that does look, just, I would, I mean, okay, they were wearing safety glasses, but as a precaution, please never test anything that destructive, like, in your living room or kitchen. Like, I don't get it. These guys have a lab at the university, and, like, why don't they just test it over there where it's, like, in a safe environment where they can't destroy stuff? I also want to take a second to admire that the team who was actually working on the Big Bang Theory they actually built like a battle bot. It's not just some like um, like computer generated image that they like you know did some like fancy stuff with it. Like they built like an actual robot that has a saw for a weapon. So I mean that that's really cool. Like a, a lot of like science and tech like movies especially they don't actually build the machine. I mean sometimes they can't because it's like fantasy. But in this case like they actually built it and it works. So that's that's really impressive on their part. Even in this environment, they're doing some things right. Like, you never want to move that robot towards you. Like, even if you're, like, in an okay environment and the thing isn't on, it's just too much of a risk. Like, you, like for you to actually, like, move that thing, like, transport it-wise, turn off the power and, like, literally take out the batteries of the remote if you have to, and then you got to physically lift it and move it where you want to go because that thing, like, that can actually kill somebody. Engineering is merely the slow, younger brother of physics. <laughs> Watch and learn. <laughs> Do either of you know how to open the toolbox? <laughs> Look, I... Okay, so I, as much as Sheldon hates on engineers, when, you, when it comes to robotics, like, theoretical physics is one step above useless. Sheldon has never had to work with his hands before to actually build something or alter something. Like, because theoretical physicists, they do a lot of thinking, right? But they don't do a lot of doing. It's like no hate, okay, a, a little bit of hate towards like physicists because like when it comes to like typical, uh, not typical, um, like what's the word I'm looking for? Like actual, I guess, applications like in the real world that exist, they have no idea what to do. And it, they're just like, yeah, how do I open this toolbox? When the new iPhone comes out or new PlayStation's released and all these new video games like come out and pretty much everything that we enjoy, those don't come from physicists, they come from engineers. What I'm trying to say, if I'm trying to say anything, is Tony Stark is an engineer. Sheldon Cooper is a physicist. Which would you rather be? Nice little bot you've got here. I'm aware. <laughs> What's this do, spin? Yep, at 3400 RPM, it can cut through steel like it was wubba. <laughs>
Neat. That looks like a death machine. That I mean, Monty's gonna get wrecked, but like, holy crap, this thing is like it, it looks like death on wheels. Okay, you know what? Like, without completely overreacting to this, like, just look at it for a second. I think Monty has a chance of beating this robot. Like, maybe not a good one, but he still has a chance because, like, if you look at, like, Kripke's robot carefully, there's loose wires all over it. And, like, that, like, the, the armor, like, archways that he has around it, they're not really doing much because it's, like, they don't, like, give you any sort of, like, structural support or, like, like why are they there? You know, like, you can take his robot and, like, condense it to a really small size and it'll be far more effective. And I don't know how fast it is, but it's, like, I don't know, I, I just, I feel like Monty still has a good chance here. Come on, Sheldon, you got this. Indeed. We are prepared for anything he can throw at us. That, that's, that's not good. This looks even worse than it did before, but Monty still has a chance. Like, a flamethrower is certainly not something you want to look forward to, but it's not that effective if it doesn't, like... So, like, for example, like, if there's a candle just, like, lit in the middle of a room, you can take your hand and wave it over the flame or through the flame with a candle, and if you move it, like, quickly enough, you don't even feel the heat. Like, it's really, really subtle. So even like something like this, which is a far more concentrated flame and it's like much more powerful, it's not really effective unless you're able to like maintain that flame on a target for an extended period of time. I don't think that Monty has the best design actually. I, I didn't know that you have to like move that saw up and down to actually operate it, but that's not, so like for example, like Kripke's robot, right? Like at the very bottom of it, he has like that like rotating thing that he says like it cuts through steel like rubber and it's, that's a far better weapon because you can just leave that thing on and rotating and all you have to do is like ram your robot into the other one and like you don't have to worry about like so because for example with monty not only do you have to turn the saw on but you have to actually move it up and down to cut something rather why don't instead of like using a vertical saw just put that thing horizontal and then at the very base of the robot so instead of like worrying about like moving it or how to position it just run Monty into the other robot while the saw is on the whole time and it's one less thing to think about. They are definitely like in a lab and they're behind safety glass so they did that kind of right but like look at the room where these two like robots are fighting in. There's literally a box that says fragile right underneath them and then right next to it is a container that has a flammable hazard sign. So like with a, there's a flamethrower on and there's a flammable tank. I don't know what's in it, and I don't know what's in that fragile box either, but, like, they're asking for a mistake to happen. Like, this, this is not gonna go well however you look at it. As promised, here's a clip of an actual BattleBots competition. And if you look at the audience, they're all behind safety glass. The robots are in that stage where the stage itself is actually, like, fighting back the robots as well. And it's like a 1v1 fight, and, like, that stage, if anything, reminds me of, like, Super Smash Bros., where it's like you can actually have like a free-for-all or like a team battle but like the stage itself is actually doing damage as well and you have to keep on your toes all the time. So these these contests are really really fun. There's a lot that goes into these like a lot of engineers really get together and like how can I make like the best destructive robot possible but there, there's even things you can't prepare for like that stage for example. Like no one knows how that's going to end up or like the size of the robot. A lot of them you want to be like smaller and mobile rather than large and bulky and like more powerful. Because if you can't actually hit the other robot, like what good is it that you have all the power in the world if you can't use it? The link to the full BattleBots video will be in the description below if you want to watch the whole thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more Big Bang Theory, let me know which season, which episode you're most interested in, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much. Stay fresh and stay golden.